بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله We praise Allah Azza wa Jal, the King, the Master, the Sustainer, the Creator of the seven heavens and the earth and we send peace and blessings upon His beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wallahi my brothers in my very little time in da'wah I've come across two types of people One is the one who thinks he's a bad boy He thinks he's a gangster He thinks he's above everyone else and deep down in his heart, and even times on his tongue, he makes it very clear that he doesn't have time for Allah. That he doesn't have time for this deen. That he doesn't have time for this religion and sunnah and do this and do that and this is haram and this is not allowed. And there's an attitude that comes along with it. <clears throat> that pride that arrogance in the heart. You come to talk to the brother, he says, get out of here, man. Every time one of you grows a little bit of a beard, uh, maybe he heard a couple of ahadith on YouTube, now he thinks he's a sheikh. Everyone wants to come and preach to me. Get out of here, man. I don't need this in my life. Let me do my thing. An attitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like somewhat that he doesn't need Allah. And then there's the opposite too. There's the guy who, mashallah, he's been on deen for a couple of years. And I hate this term, on deen or religious. What is religious? What does it mean to be on deen? Who defines who is and who isn't on deen? Who died and gave us the authority to, to claim whether this person is or isn't on deen anyway? Have we become so shallow that now because you got a nice beard, uh, you wear a nice white abaya, Allahu Akbar, this guy's pumped. So there's the opposite. There's the guy who, mashallah, he's been on deen for a couple of years. He starts believing in his heart, whether we're honest or not tonight. Wallahi, in the depths of our hearts, in places, in places that we don't talk about, Wallahi, we start believing that I'm something. We start looking down at others. We start believing that deep down in my heart, I stand a level above the rest. That I got a nice beard and this brother's clean shaven. That I've been praying for the last 10 years, this guy still doesn't know how to make wudu. So therefore, I'm better than him. And he starts believing also, it gets worse. He also starts believing that Allah Azza wa Jal needs him. That Allah needs his salah. That Allah needs his charity. That Allah needs my tasbih. And there's an attitude. Wallahi, there's an attitude. One of us, as he's walking out of the masjid, maybe he puts $50 into the donation box. And in the depths of his heart, Wallahi, in places we don't talk about, you really truly believe that Allah owes you a favor. That Allah owes me something, man. That I've been praying for the last 10 years, so therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He owes me something. Well, my brothers, today i got news for both sides. Allah owes you nothing. Allah owes you nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your da'wah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your beat. Allah azza wa jal is free from all, from anything. Allah azza wa jal needs nothing and no one. We need Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be fooled. Don't let shaitan play with your mind. That look at you, masha'Allah. You've been on deen. You're a cut above the rest. You're nothing. And you little bad boy who thinks he's something, you know. Allahu Akbar, wallahi, nothing burns my soul more than a brother who puts on a cloak. He puts on an image that's not him. And what's worse, wallahi, most gangsters, 
They only look down at Muslims. Maybe, you know, he buys a nice little car. Or maybe he's got a few little spinners around him who fear him because of his physical size. Yeah, so they start looking. So he actually starts believing on something, man. Or maybe you're making a couple of dollars moving a couple of things. So then there's this attitude. Don't come to me with your deed. Let me do as I please. Let me run amok. I want to go where I want. I want to sell what I want. I want to snort what I want. I want to sleep with whoever I want. Don't come to me with your religion. If Allah is so great, then why is he so bothered? Leave me alone. Well, my brother, you also, no matter what you do, no matter what you sell, no matter what you take and how much you take of it, it doesn't harm Allah. In the authentic hadith, in the hadith could see Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ya ibadi. Who's Allah Azza wa Jal speaking to? Allah says, Oh my slaves and please my brothers, you have to listen with depth. Many of us, we come to a talk, we come to a lecture, we come to a khutbah. You sit in the khutbah to listen. Today we don't come to hear speakers, we come to watch speakers. We come to watch them. No, 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 we're here to listen. And many of us, when we sit and we listen, we think, Allahu Akbar, I wish my friend was here. I wish my uncle was here. I wish my brother was here. He needed to hear these words. Man, he spoke about everything he does wrong. This is the biggest sign of a corrupted heart. Because if Allah wanted them here, Wallahi, they will be here. But you're here. Allah put you here for you to listen. For maybe this disease is in your heart. Allah says, Ya ibadi, O oh my slaves. If the first of you to the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, if you were all to come together collectively, all, not some, all of you were to come together collectively to worship me and worship me and worship me until you become like the most pure heart amongst you, this does not increase my greatness in any way, shape or form. And the opposite is true, you little gangster. Ya ibadi, O my slaves. If all of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, if you were all to come together collectively, and all of you were to sin, sin, steal, cheat, sell drugs, prostitute, do whatever you desire, you little gangster. Do whatever you think makes you look cool and hectic on the streets. Allah says clearly, if all of you, not some, if all of you were to do it collectively until you become like the most criminal heart amongst you, this doesn't take anything away from my mulk in any way, shape or form. Allah doesn't need anyone. Allah doesn't need anyone. Allah is Al-Malik. Allah is free. Antum al fuqara Allah. You are the destituted ones to Allah. People walking around with an attitude. And I don't have to pray. I don't have to fast. Or even worse, I've been fasting, you know, for 10 years, praying for 10 years. How come Allah doesn't give me this? And how come Allah... What, you think Allah owes you something? You think Allah owes you something? You think Allah needs you? Allah doesn't need anyone. Allah doesn't...